Hello, I am Chaplain Anthony Kelly, and today I want to talk to you about what after Christmas. That is, after the presents have been opened up, after all the meal has been eaten, after all the family has left, what is there after Christmas? First, let me tell you a story about a little boy. His name was Matthew. Now, on Christmas morning, he awoke at probably around 5 o'clock in the morning. He got up. He was about an average little 7-year-old boy. He got up out of bed real quietly, sneaking down the stairs. In his mind, he was like a special forces soldier or he was a ninja and they, he was on a special op and he was sidestepping slowly, creepily down the stairs. He was excited. It was Christmas morning. He wanted to see what Santa had brought him. So as he made his way down the stairs, slowly but surely, he walked into the living room where the Christmas tree was and he saw a beautiful sight. He saw ribbons, he saw bows, he saw presents, he saw gadgets galore, he saw blinking lights. His eyes beheld the beautiful sight of Christmas morn. He looked upon the plate where he had laid cookies for Santa to eat and they were gone. Nothing but crumbs. The glass of milk they laid for Santa had all been drunk and all was well with the world because Santa had came. He beheld a beautiful sight. Christmas was here. After all the excitement, after all the month of buildup, Christmas was finally here for him to enjoy. Now the scripture tells us that Jesus is the Word of God. In fact, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. And in him was life, and that life was the light of all men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Now, in the early church, the majority of the New Testament was written against false teachers. These false teachers were called Gnostics. They were the ones that felt that they had special knowledge of God, and they, only they could understand truly who God was, or what God was. And they felt that God was so transcendent, so otherworldly, that he could not possibly ever come down in the flesh. Therefore, Jesus was just an aberration. He was just a phantom. He never really came on this earth and lived a sinless life. He never really came to this earth to go to the cross and die for our sins because he was never really here. It was just an aberration, a, a phantom or a projection of God upon the earth, but it wasn't God in the flesh. So therefore, the majority of the New Testament, especially in Paul's writings, and especially here in John, he's writing, the Apostle John is writing against these false teachers and saying these Gnostics were wrong, that Jesus is the Word of God. He is the Word become flesh. Now, as Matthew walked into that living room and beheld that beautiful sight, he got so excited that he called and screamed for his mom and his dad. He grabbed a pot and a pan, and, and he ended up taking a spoon and rattling them all together and making the noise, making sure everybody was awoke, and as everybody sleepishly awoke, they came down the stairs. Matthew was here, waiting full of excitement, wanting to open up his presents, wanted to see what Santa had brought him. And then as the family did, they had a materialistic feast of presents. And they opened up, and the dad, he got cologne. He got car gadgets and stuff that he wanted. The mom got pretty cologne, and, and she got jewelry. Matthew got a car, and he got... Batman, and he got star figures. He got all these toys that he wanted. His sisters, they got their Barbie dolls and, and their American dolls. They got all the stuff that they wanted. Until there was one last present under the tree. They'd given it all. They were done. But Matthew still had one last present. And as he grabbed that present, he noticed it was from his grandmother. Now, he loved his grandmother. In fact, he was uh, like grandma's boy. He had grandma tied around his finger. One year, he asked grandma for a cap gun with a holster, and he acted like a real cowboy, and he'd be able to go shoot Indians, and he would have fights and, in his mind, in his imagination. And his grandmother heartily bought that for him because she loved him. And so as 
he got this gift. He noticed that, you remember the, each year, each gift kind of got a little bit strange and a little bit different. So he opened up the box. He, he wanted to see what his grandma got for him. And it was a puzzle. It was a puzzle, but there was no picture to go by. He looked all over on the cover and the box, but there was nothing there. There was nothing to go by. The gift was just pure pieces of a puzzle with no picture to go by. He, he threw it to the side and he wanted to get more, and play with his toys. His dad said, no, wait a minute, son. Before you play with your toys, before we do anything else, we're going to build this picture that grandma has sent us. Reluctantly, little Matthew decided he had to do what his dad wanted him to do, told him to do. So he, him and his dad went to work on this puzzle right here in the living room floor. Now the scripture further tells us in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 13, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. His name, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only a witness to, to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not know or recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision, but of a, or a husband's will, but born of God." What are you looking for this Christmas? What is it you truly are looking for? Many people are looking for lights, blinking lights. They'll go pay lots of money to see these extravagant lights all throughout the city. But what is it you are looking for today? What light can shine in your life? I'm reminded of the movie Deck the Halls with Matthew Broderick, uh, Matthew Broderick and Diana DeVito. And in that movie... They both go crazy over lights. Danny DeVito has this awe-inspiring idea that he wants to put so many lights and build such a production of lights in his home, around his home, that he wants to see it from, have it seen from space. Now, Danny DeVito, uh, he was a kind of a slimy car salesman type of person. Now, Matthew Broderick was an anal retentive dentist, and he really had to have Christmas his own way. And, and to have his next door neighbor, Danny DeVito, do that and irritate his life was a horrible, horrible thing. And so he did all of his best to try to thwart Danny DeVito. And the movie is a crazy movie, but it centers around something that Christmas is more than about blinking lights. It's about the light of the world. It's about Jesus, the true light of God coming to this earth for us, humanity. That he died for you and for me. Now for Matthew, as Matthew was walking down those stairs and he, and he crept in, he, he, it was more about just the lights for him. It was about the presence. It was about the gifts. But he would soon learn it was about more than just all the plastic gifts that he would receive from Santa Claus and his parents. As he started working on that puzzle. Him and his dad first formed piece by piece by piece. First, a head of a donkey formed. And then a cow. He's thinking to himself, is this some kind of barnyard scene here? And as he pieced them all together, then he saw what it was. It was the most beautiful picture he had ever seen. Him and his dad, they both had a tear in their eye. They started to cry. Why? Because it was the manger. And he got it. He got the idea from his grandmother. And a light went off in his head and in his heart. That Christmas is not about your gifts. It's not about the presents. It's not about the tree. It's not about the lights on the tree or the ornaments. It's about Jesus. Jesus, the word become flesh. Come to mankind to die for us. But he came to this earth on this Advent season for you and for me. He purposely came to earth. God became man so that you and I can be set free from our sins, washed by his blood on the cross and forgiven of every vile, wicked, unclean thing that we've ever done. Every lying, every cheating, every act of lust and perversion, it's all washed away through a relationship with him. That's what Christmas is about.
That is the perfect gift that God could ever give us, you and me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. God is a giver. He loves you. He is crazy about you. And he came and gave of his son so that you and I can be set free today. It is my prayer. It is my hope. It is my desire that all of us see the true light of the world today. That is Jesus Christ. Jesus, the word become flesh and dwelt and tabernacled with us so that we can be set free from our sins by his blood. So today, what does Christmas mean to you? It should mean the word become flesh. That Jesus is the light of the world that can shine in your life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this video today. It is my prayer that in this season that you will continue to give, to give of God's love through His Son, Jesus Christ, in your life. Please like and share this video to all your family, friends, and loved ones and share the light of the world, Jesus Christ, to all you come in contact with. In Jesus' name, amen.